Hey there, folks. I'm right here on the side of the road. But uh, yeah, you guys have seen this patch before, this beautiful Eastern Prickly Pear patch, Punchy Shimafusa. I made not only several videos on it, including one last year, about this time when it was flowering as well. But um, all of my Eastern Prickly Pear, I, I, I collected two pads, one last year, one this year, both of which have now sent out a bunch of new pads. So, you know, I collected one like that, and then it sends out a bunch of these new ones, which you can see all emerging this time of year. Those light green pads are all the new ones, because uh, they all emerge in spring. And, um, uh, yeah, so I collected one pad each, uh, one this year, one last year, and uh, they've both grown like crazy. And um, so yeah, this is the uh, mother plant, uh, mother clump of my uh, Eastern Prickly Pear, which is super exciting. And um, yeah, you can see, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, animals come over and take a bite out of these sometimes. Um, and uh, additionally, they, um, <laughs> they also spray painted over it here. But uh, yeah, no, these, uh, these, these are tough plants and they don't, uh, they don't mind, uh, you know, this wet climate, of course, you know, not only do they not mind it, they're native here. This is a, a native um, cactus species. You know, people are surprised enough to hear that any cactus, cacti can uh, grow here at all. And um, not only can, you know, so many species thrive here, but uh, we have native cacti, which is pretty incredible. This species right here, the Eastern Prickly Pear. And uh, they put out these gorgeous yellow flowers, which literally flower for about a day and then they're gone. Even within like the span of just the daytime, they uh, will open and close by night. But um, as I was mentioning, when I, when I showed a video of mine, mine sent out about three flowers this year. Um, this is smaller, obviously, much smaller. But um, they, uh, on a big plant like this, a huge clump, you know, a day at a time for like each, each flower means that, you know, you got tons of uh, flowers over the span of, you know, at least a week, if not several. Uh, because you know, uh, you know, one plant flowers and another, and they flower various times, so they, they keep flowering uh, for a while, which is super cool. And um, the, the flowers are on top of these. Uh, the the na namesake of the plant, the actual prickly pear, they're they're actually a fruits, and they're edible. They're, you can eat them raw. You can boil them, cook them, juice them. They're, <laughs> they're very popular, and um, uh, you know they're used in a lot of cuisine. Um, and so are the pads, um, and they've been used for thousands and thousands of years. Native Americans use them, cook with them, still do. And uh, they're super useful plant um, and uh, really awesome. And um, yeah, so those little roundish things, those are the actual fruit and then they will ripen and turn this deep purple. And then the uh, greens are, the green is the, uh, the, uh, the pads, the, you know, the big ones are the, these are the pads here, which uh, of course have all the meat in them. And then the rest is sort of, it's like a, you know, really cool plant because it's both got this sort of meaty substance and then also fruit, um, very useful, especially out in the desert. Obviously, this is not a desert species, but desert prickly pear, desert cacti, extremely useful as a food staple, and are still used in cuisines, um, many cuisines uh, around the world. And uh, you can see how super cool, um, you know, as a pad falls off, um, it literally just drops off, and then itself, that pad, you know, literally, I mean, it's amazing. You, they proliferate so much that that they can, uh, they're not invasive at all, but they, they're native, but they um, literally you can put them on top of like a, pile of leaves, like a compost pile, and they're still, they start growing, because these pads, just one, once one falls off, it, it roots in so easily, and you can see that one over there, um, and then it starts growing. So you have that in several instances, and uh, just a super awesome species, super tough um, and hardy, and uh, this is native from southern Florida, so the tropics all the way up to southern New England, um, and southern Canada, southern Ontario. Um, awesome species. Uh, they're native examples within about 15 minutes drive of here. Um, I have videos, the huge native clumps um, along the Potomac River on the Billy Goat Trail, which is a very popular hiking spot near here. Um, just an awesome species, absolutely love it. Um, and one of many cacti that thrive here, but the only native species and um, so cool. Just love using a prickly pear. Let me know your, your thoughts if you guys grow them. Yeah, and any cold, I mean, these literally are grown just about any climate, so long as it's not like literally Arctic. Um, you know, you can grow them in the tropics, you can grow them in this, up to the subarctic, pretty much. Um, they're just insanely tough, so I, I would, yeah, definitely try one for, uh, I think they're, they're a must-have for a, uh, a zone pusher's garden, a, a cold-hardy, uh, uh, exotic plant garden. Uh, they're just awesome species. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed, and, um, yeah, take care. Have a good one.